Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to take a look at the Cauldron of File C430. It is by Blue Mesh Simulations. It was available on Sim Market for $10 or 8.5 euro. It is on sale at that price so it will go up in price in a few days. And it is a French racer. Well, it's actually the trainer for a racer of the same period, which is the C450. I wish I had the C450. That would have been nice. The C450 and the C460 had much more power. Uh, the C460, which was related to the C450, had a 310 horsepower engine and had a maximum speed of 270, uh, uh, sorry, 270 knots. And this one, uh, the 430, only had a 150 horsepower main engine and it topped out at 165 knots so much slower and less powerful engine so why why couldn't you have given me the c450 or c460 uh, it is in honor of ellen boucher and ellen boucher uh, perished at the age of 26 as she did set a few records as a racer but she set her most prominent record in the c450 she died in the c430 so uh, I wish I had the plane where she set the record in, not the one she died in, but okay. But this is in the museum uh, prominently, so... Alright. Anyway, but yeah, uh, 135 knots it says for the cruise speed here. On Wikipedia it says 140. I'm looking for speed here. I would like, obviously, the faster plane, but I'll take it for now. In fact, what I would really like uh, from the 1930s is the Hughes H1, which is much faster than either of these planes. So, yeah. But maybe it'll be a good sightseeing plane because it's got this uh, expansive cockpit. It's an interesting view out of it. Uh, I have tried it once just to make sure it worked. And, yeah, it's I'm worried about its speed and lack thereof. I, it, I had trouble getting it to 135, actually. So we'll see, but I was fully fueled and I'm under fueled this time. So we'll see if that helps. All right, we'll take off from uh, De Gaulle and fly around Paris. And I think this will be a good a sightseeing plane for Paris. And we'll see how it does. All right, so I'm not using track IR right now. So I'll just pan. The cockpit looks really good, uh, really scratched up. Well, um, but gives a good feel to it. There's wood there, wood paneling, um, wood floor. And of course the the French dials, <laughs> which, uh, which is why I got it. So outside, it's an interesting look. It's sort of, uh, the long cockpit is weird <laughs> in a way, uh, but Reminiscent of certain World War II fighters. Uh, in general, it sort of reminds me of a Tiger Moth with the top wing removed. Anyway, taking off the first time I tried it, it did not seem to be very difficult uh, for a tail dragger, of course. And again, it's only 150 horsepower, so it's not like one of those World War II planes that try and kill you. Okay, off we go. So yeah, pretty simple uh, compared to say to Spitfire or something. Not a big problem. No retractable landing gear. Actually, the C460 is the one that had the retractable landing gear. The 450 also did not. Went pretty fast given that it didn't have the retractable landing gear. Now we do have retractable flaps. There we go. It's very smooth. Uh, it's not a small plane. Unzipped, it's about 2 gigabytes. But performance is not too bad with it. So let's see, what are we up to now? 100 knots, folks. Since I fly fairly low with this, uh, it, it feels like we're going reasonably fast, but... You can see, uh, as we go up, it it's loses speed. I want that 135 cruise. Now, 
cruise altitude. It shouldn't be too high for this, right? It's not a plane that cruises at really high altitudes, so I don't know. Another plane that sort of reminds me of is uh, there's a de Havilland that was in uh, Flight Sim 9. It was one of those record setting planes flew from, I think, London to Australia? I think it was the original de Havilland Comet, not the airliner. Yeah, it's the DH-88. But that one had the uh, engines on the wings. The, the engine look was roughly the same as what this front end looks like. And I wonder if it's the same engine. Or a related engine. That one was uh, Gypsy 6R. No, that was a six-cylinder. This one has uh, a four-cylinder. You can see, actually, the exhausts there. Um, and that one was 230 horsepower. Still a very similar look to the nacelle. I guess this was a popular motif for engine nacelles of the period. Probably by requirement of uh, the air breathingness. Interesting offset there. The seat actually, I mean, that's uh, it's a very realistic looking seat to be honest. Well, we're getting some speed now. Let's see. Only 110, it says. 110 knots. It's 220, 230 kilometers per hour. Uh, 117. Alright. But mind you, we're only a quarter filled with fuel. So. Well, let's see how Programmage Tree deals with it whether we can get good performance in Paris. I see the Eiffel Tower. Let's just head towards it. Ah, it's a little bit choppy around here. Very intense with all the photogrammetry. There's the Arc de Triomphe. And... Yeah. That's got to be an interesting traffic experience. Very much halting here. I wonder if it's better inside the cockpit. It sort of is. It's better inside the cockpit than outside. Not a huge amount better. You could still tell the hesitancy of the simp, but not bad. Definitely a uh, worthy plane to sightsee in. Be careful though. Someday we'll have computers capable of magnificent photogrammetry loading times, but <laughs> that day is not right now. Still, it looks great. I seem to always say it when I'm around Paris, but I, I don't know all the sites, so I know there are a lot of them. There are many interesting buildings. Before all I know, half of them are like something prosaic, you know. They all look very interesting. Yeah, definitely better inside. Much better experience inside than outside. What is that round thing? in the middle of a park that's floating I guess it looks weird it probably hasn't loaded properly seems complicated yeah I don't know what that is
It's fairly maneuverable, the plane. You can see how it might be a trainer for a, a racing plane and that it seems to be able to pull a decent amount of G's here and there. Well, on a dive I can get it to 135. Oh, there's an obelisk. Ah, I think I see Notre Dame there. Uh, well, if we're going straight at something, this is not the best place to get a view, though. Notre Dame. The front of it seems a little bit flatter than I thought it was, but alright. That's a heck of a complex, the thing to our right. That looks... Apocalyptic, or <laughs> I don't know what... Grim, it looks grim. Some of the cranes at the top of buildings don't quite get rendered right. They might need to just have something clever figure those out. Well, one more pass and then we'll see about landing. Oh, very choppy here. I'm guessing this was supposed to be a very reliable engine that wasn't prone to overheating or anything. Though there is a temperature thing there in general. I've got it thralled up all the way and it hasn't really cared, so overall it's a nice effect, the whole photogrammetry thing here in Paris. I remember Paris scenery in X Plane Eleven and FSX. There, there were good packages, free, free packages for it, but obviously not to this level. Still, uh, probably I should be turning it down just a tad, or like pre-download it. Even if I pre-download it, I don't know if uh, my computer can run it. It's a little bit too intense. I'm a sucker for vintage planes. I haven't flown this in any other simulator before, so there's that too. Away from the photogrammetry, it's smoother, of course. We're just exiting the photogrammetry area. Lots of trees around here. Interesting sort of communities they've got just on the outskirts of Paris. Of course, Flights in 2020 does have a thing with having too many trees to begin with. Uh, sometimes. So I don't know if this is supposed to be quite so foresty, but maybe. Essence. Our fuel tank reading is Essence. I guess that's fair. Landing speed for this was 59 miles an hour or 95 kilometers per hour. Yeah. Keeping side of the runway is <laughs> bit of a pickle back here. Yeah, that's a thing. I suppose with track IR I could sort of make myself taller, that, that would be helpful. A good thing it's a fairly long runway for this.
Oh, uh, I'm bouncing still. Uh, it does have a sort of stall warning beep. Uh, I I bounced I bounced a lot of times. I bounce a lot of times. I I checked the the landing speed. I tried to touch down at the landing speed, but seems like I was too fast or just hit the ground too hard. Uh, oh, there's a taxiway somewhere here. Yep. Well, first attempt landing in it. Uh, on the first flight, I did not attempt landing. Oh! Bits of the gall seem floating. Hold on, we need to check this out. Hmm. Maybe it's something I've done. Mind you, I, I have mods for scenery and such, but... I don't recall if I have anything for the galls, so I might have to... Check... If I need to fix something. Well, uh, let's just go across the grass here. It's very nimble on the ground, by the way. Ground handling is good. Well, yeah, something went horribly wrong here. Meshes are not where they are supposed to be. But yeah, I'll have to check. I mean, obviously, there's plenty of scenery that has gone right, so this is probably because of a mod, I think. I can't imagine that they would have missed this phenomenon in uh, such a highly trafficked airport. I, I swear, I flew over this and it looked right before. Whoa, 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 I got turned. Oh! I did not actually do that. I did not turn the plane to the right and... Well, I guess I, my wing got caught on something. Alright, well, there you have it. <laughs> the the Cadron Rafale C430 by Blue Mesh. And... I'll try and figure out what happened to the Gaul Airport on my own. But, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.